Hi, it's Monday again. So, time for another video. Uh, last week I had mentioned how we uh, can't compete or don't or won't compete against um, systems that rely on robots and freezers, and there were some questions about what more specifically I meant by robots and freezers. So I'll go into a bit more detail about that with an explanation that I owe to a former employee, um, a delightful gentleman who worked with us. He had started baking at the age of 25 in a, a grocery store bakery and he worked right up until he was 70 uh, and then the last year of his career he, he worked here at McBride. Um, before that last year he had well he'd worked successfully successively larger and larger bakeries and ended up in this massive plant outside Regina where he had to wear a hard hat and ear protection and steel-toed boots as a baker um, who never actually touched any dough right <laughs> and, the, and the bread that plant produced was never touched by human hands so how did this work? Um, and it was like this. Come into the plant were massive power cables this big around, and they were needed to um, power mixers, right? Our mixers mix bread for eight minutes. These ones mix bread for three minutes, and they were the size of a house, right? Um, and then the yeast came, like, showed up in tanker trucks, and you'd pull this cord, and like barrels and barrels full of this yeast solution would, would fall down into the mixers. Um, the bread would get mixed in three minutes, and then the dough would fall, would get dumped out into these hoppers, which spun them around and cut off pieces of, uh, of dough. It would sort of, you know, be like this, right, enough for a loaf of bread. And then they'd be fed into, you know, pans like this, which were all fitted on conveyor belts, and there'd be like hundreds and hundreds of these. Um, so the bread would sit in, the dough would sit in there, and then move through a proofer, which would be uh, like a warm steam room where it would rise in 30 to 45 minutes. And from there, move through an oven, which would be a conveyor belt oven. And that was actually uh, this guy's job. He would look through a window into the oven and then he would be able to adjust the, the speed of the conveyor belt a little bit up or down. Um, okay, and then this is where the, uh, the air protection comes in. As soon as it comes out of the oven, this, this bread at 400 degrees, it would, these, these suction cups would come down, you know, it's called deep panning, and they would stick to the top of the loaf of bread, pull them out of the baking pans, drop them onto a conveyor belt, which would take them into a blast freezer, where they would stay for 45 minutes and come out rock hard. Why do they need to be rock hard? Because then they're going to go through the slicer and get bagged. Um, and yeah, that's right. So the, the, the bread that you buy in a grocery store has actually already been frozen and thawed, so by the time you get it, it's, it's, it's thought. All right, so why do it like this? Um, well, obviously it's efficient, right? Um, you can make a heck of a lot of bread in a very short time, and that's kind of necessary. Of course, this is the system has grown up over many years. It didn't just like happen like this, right? Um, but we've evolved, you know, a consumer culture and a food system where we rely on products being available all the time. Right? So stores are open either 24 hours or they're at least open very early in the morning and open quite late at night. And you rely on them always having the products that you expect to be there. So, and if they're not there, then you're disappointed and maybe going to go over to, you know, the competition. All right, and you're familiar with this, especially if you're a customer of ours, because you know what it's like. You come in at like 5 o'clock on a Tuesday afternoon and oh no, there's no multigrain bread. And how can that be, right? Like for a grocery store, this would be a tragedy that needs to overcome, and so you overcome it by um, having a production system which is always in operation and where you can pull things out of a freezer if the shelves start to, you know, start to get low. Um, all right, so to have such a system, because this, this dough that we started off with, right, the thing that comes out of the mixer, it's not just a food product like it is for us, right? <laughs> it's also an in it's an industrial throughput, and to make that work, uh, this needs to have not just the food ingredients, but it also needs to have um, a number of chemicals, um, or perhaps enzymes, and things that will make that dough move through this process more smoothly, or have a longer shelf life at the end of it, um, and in other ways, just you know, behave as we expect consumer products to behave in the food system that we have. So I'll talk about that in the next video.